I've made videos over the past 12 months. Well, actually, this channel hasn't been around for 12 months. So over the past eight or nine months, talking about the legacy auto manufacturers who are in the most trouble. Some of those include Honda and Mazda. But BMW is, strangely enough, one of the automakers who I believe is in the most trouble. And that comes in spite of the fact of them achieving record sales last year. So why is it? that BMW seems to be headed down a path of potential disaster and bankruptcy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all you new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Great to have so many new subscribers on the channel here. Make sure you check out some of the 700 plus videos we've made over the last six months alone. Now, BMW, what exactly are they doing? Well, ever heard of the word sunk cost bias? I tend to use that a fair bit on this channel. BMW, by the way, I should disclose, I actually own a BMW. It's okay. Personally, I'm looking forward to owning an electric version of the size of car that I have. I have an NX5, but I need something similar for my boys, for the road trips where you go on for BMX riding and camping and those kinds of things. So as soon as one becomes available to me, I will be purchasing it. But I should disclose the fact that I have been very critical of BMW in the past, and I think for good reason. They have criticized the electric revolution very heavily, and they're one of those companies who think that having a plan B or a plan C or a plan Z is a good idea, and I personally think that's a terrible idea. Now, BMW, what are they doing? While well, they're investing many millions of dollars right now, as we speak, as you watch this video, into development of ICE engines, not sure what I stands for, internal combustion engine. Gas engines, gasoline engines, diesel engines. BMW seem to think that even in 2030, people will still want gasoline engines in the premium segment. Now, I've said on this channel many times that I don't believe if you bought a luxury car and it is powered by a petrol engine, then I believe you have been swindled. You have not, in fact, bought a luxury car. That's like saying, I bought the most amazing BlackBerry phone. I bought the most amazing Nokia pre-smartphone phone for $1,000. It was, it's $2,000, whatever the figure is. Y you know, it was a lot of money. What did you get? What did you get for that lot of money? Did you get the newest technology? Did you get something that's going to depreciate like a, like a backpack full of rocks? Yes, probably you did. Now, what am I talking about? Well, just have a look at the depreciation of ICE vehicles in Norway to give you an idea of exactly what's going to happen to the value of your so-called luxury car. Now, right now, amid the unprecedented buzz around electric cars and surging sales all over the world, the modern petrol and diesel engine have been thrown a lifeline by German automotive giant BMW, who seem to think that it's a good idea to throw good money at old technology. As the global automotive industry prepares to shift to electric cars, German car giant BMW has indicated it will keep on in terms of traditional internal combustion engines. And then it's not abandoning V8s, V6s, or gasoline. In fact, it says some things here, which frankly make me question in a very serious way, the sanity of the people working at BMW. You need to wait and listen to this because this stuff has just blown my mind in terms of, you, you know, sometimes you see a person and you think that person, you know, I, I feel sorry for you. you. You're genuinely stupid. But this is just a level of stupidity that is so egregious, so stark, so incredibly overwhelming that I can't get over it. I'll share with you in a minute what I'm talking about. I'm speaking with German publication Auto Motor und Sport BMW development boss Frank Weber confirmed the company will develop a new generation of petrol and diesel engines to comply with future rounds of strict emissions regulations, including new six-cylinder and V8 engines for the marquee's largest and most powerful cars. Now, I should point out, I have been reading automotive magazines since I was a little boy, and I've read many thousands and thousands of articles. I've looked at all the differences in engine technology, and it's very common for companies... <laughs> <laughs> it's very common for them to come out and say, wow, our latest engines, they're amazing. Look, look at the efficiency gain. We've, we've improved efficiency by 2%. We've improved power by 3%. We've changed the cylinder wall coating. It's going to be amazing. And you know what the truth is? The changes, nobody can even notice them. 
that is so common in the gasoline diesel industry. Nobody can even notice changes that cost companies hundreds of millions of dollars to institute. Now, BMW will be the last of the big three German luxury brands, including Mercedes and Audi, to switch exclusively to electric power. That's if they're still around, that is. With the company planning to continue offering buyers a choice between petrol, diesel, hybrid, and electric power, a departure from the electric-only targets announced by its rivals. Now, I personally think having five different forms of propulsion, that's five, and then having a million different models is a strategy for disaster. Let's even just have a look at a company like Apple. How many models do Apple have of phone? What about Tesla? How many models of car do Tesla sell? Interestingly, Tesla will probably overtake BMW in global sales numbers this year. That's worth thinking about. Now, whereas Audi will switch to electric power only outside of China in 2033, and Mercedes-Benz will be ready to go all electric in 2030, only 50% of BMW, Mini, and Rolls-Royce sales are planned to be electric by 2030. So my question I have for you here is, who are these 50% of all BMW, Rolls-Royce, and Mini owners who are gonna be willing to buy inferior old technology in eight years from now. Now, BMW is also set to be one of the last major brands offering V8 power. Mercedes-Benz is currently in the process of phasing out eight-cylinder engines in its mid-size models, while Audi has ceased development of new combustion engines full stop, making the petrol V8s in its current large S and RS performance cars its absolute last. One thing is certain for us, we still need the state-of-the-art combustion engine for a few years to effectively reduce CO2 emissions in the passenger car sector globally. I'm gonna repeat that because this is what I'm talking about when I talk about stupidity from BMW. One thing is certain for us, we still need the state-of-the-art combustion engine for a few years to effectively reduce CO2 emissions in the passenger car sector globally. So BMW is saying they can't reduce emissions unless they continue to make emissions producing gas-powered vehicles. They go on to say, that's why we're working on a new generation of engines, petrol, diesel, six cylinder, eight cylinder, you know. They go on to say, they will then also be technologically prepared for the coming emission standards. With the six cylinder engine alone, we're reducing CO2 emissions more massively than has ever been the case with a generation change. We're helped here by the fact that legislation is beginning to be standardized around the world. So they're gonna reduce emissions massively in their gas-powered vehicles. <laughs> so massively, more massively than any other generation change. So what by? 5%? Okay, wow, that's massive. Amazing. Now, BMW's next generation V8, codenamed S68, is rumored to be around a few months away from production, with the engine tipped to debut in the new 7 Series. If you buy a 7 Series with an ICE gasoline engine, then yeah, a fool and his money are easily parted. Now, apparently a plug-in hybrid version of the 7 Series will follow towards the end of the year in the XM Super SUV. Now, we don't know what the new six-cylinder petrol and diesel engines will be called, nor do we care, or when they will debut. However, the current generation S58 twin-turbo petrol inline six in the M3 and the M4 performance cars is rumored to receive upgrades to meet stringent Euro 7 regulations due in 2025. Now, what I find interesting is how exactly BMW think that they're going to compete with vehicles like Lucid Air or the Tesla Model S Plaid or even the Tesla Model 3 Performance with their petrol-powered vehicles? I just don't see how it's physically possible. Now, when quizzed on how the new six-cylinder engine family will differ from its predecessors, Weber said, nothing is really like it was before. <laughs> Sorry. It's still an engine. This guy's just out of his mind. There's something completely new in the cylinder head. And with that, we'll go even further when it comes to efficiency. And this guy just knows how to talk it out of, his, out of his behind, doesn't he? For the immediate future, BMW's electric car rollout will see the company introduce electric versions of its petrol-powered cars, starting with the midsize i4 and iX3, the flagship i7 sedan and small iX1 due this year, and the large i5 sedan in 2023. In 2025, BMW will debut the new class, a new architecture designed primarily for electric cars, though petrol and diesel engines will still be manufactured. Now, 
I should point out, BMW plans to offer an electric vehicle in 90% of its current model segments by 2023 for a total of 12 electric cars, ahead of a total of 2 million electric vehicles sold by 2025. That's a cumulative total, by the way, not a yearly total. Now, new European regulations set to come in force in BMW's home region, Germany, Europe, are likely to see BMW phase out petrol and diesel engines by 2035, but combustion power, they claim, will live on elsewhere. Now, Weber went on to say, because regardless of whether it is a combustion engine or electric, the overall reduction in CO2 is crucial in the fight against climate change. What the customer wants is just as important, and we have to meet the wishes and requirements accordingly. Let's get back to facts here, BMW. Ice engines don't reduce emissions. Battery-powered electric cars do. The fact that you are planning on selling 50% of your entire fleet as ICE vehicles in 2030 means that you are ill-prepared for the future, and I strongly warn anyone invested in this company to get out now while they can. Thanks for watching the channel. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.